Many of you out there have been asking Alta Labs to release a hardware controller that wasn't connected to the cloud and they have finally released that product. This is their network controller and today we're gonna check it out and see what it has to offer. In the box, you will find a quick start guide, a couple of screws and wall anchors, the controller itself, and finally a good, easy to use mounting plate. Removing the network controller from the protective pouch reveals the device that is strikingly similar to another Alta Labs product, their eight port switch. The housing is pretty much identical to the switch, which, is a smart design choice as the existing switch is already aesthetically pleasing. So matching that form factor is a great choice in my opinion. Continuing on with the dimensions, here are some other devices you might be familiar with. We can use these to give you a better idea of the network controller's physical size. On the front, we have a reset button and a single RJ45 PoE Plus port. Speaking of power, on the rear of the device is a USB Type-C port that you can use to power the controller should you not have PoE Plus adapters or a switch capable of providing power. This device will typically consume 5 watts of power with a maximum power draw of around 8 watts. To open the device, there are 4 screws hidden under the rubber feet on each corner. Once we have those removed, we can take a peek at the inner workings of the controller. Prying on the corner of the housing seems to be a good enough way to separate the top and bottom pieces. I'm pretty confident this is the Bluetooth controller and the antenna that you can use to optionally set up this device for the first time. Turning the PCB upside down reveals the rest of the components. Under the black heatsink is a quad-core Qualcomm processor that allows this device to control around 1000 Autolab devices. I have an existing unmanaged network already operating. Let's get the network controller integrated with the network so we can explore what options we have available to us. Now that I plug the network control into an existing network, I have to go to my router to determine what the IP address of it is because I am running DHCP on this network. So let me get logged into the router so we can take a look at our client list to see what the IP address might be. All right, here under clients, uh, you can see that my MacBook Pro is registered here. Looks like control already registered itself. We see another Alta. This is most likely the switch that we plugged the control into. And then also we're running a NAS on this network. We'll plug in more Alta devices later to get them integrated into control once we get logged in. But for now, we're just going to skip ahead to accessing this for the first time. So it says to log in, please try this host name or this host name instead. If you cannot reach those, you may need to add the local host name into your host file. On Linux, this is really easy. You just edit the slash etc slash host file and you put this IP address in your host files you associate to this DNS, or I'm sorry, this host name, but we're not gonna do any of that stuff. Don't ask me how to do that on Windows, by the way, because I have no idea. We're just gonna simply click on this and that should be more than good enough for now. Now, because this isn't connected to the cloud, you can't use your email address to log in. So I'll just try with my email address really quickly and this should fail. Yep, so I'm not sure what would happen if you reuse your email. IP address here. So I'm gonna make up a email. IP address and then we'll get logged in for the very first time. So let's click on sign up. Go ahead and put in my name and the email I wish to use. Enter in a password. Click on get started and it says check your email. Your account has been created. Please check your email to confirm your account. If you don't receive an email in the next few minutes, please check back in your spam folder. So click on login. So I'm gonna go check my email real quick and see what happens. All right, checking my email. It looks like they sent us this convenient link to click on. So we'll just go ahead and click on that. And it says we're now able to log in. So close those tabs and let's go ahead and log in with the information we just provided. Clicking on sign in here. Okay, looks like we're logged in. And interestingly, it says that there's a new AP that it sees already, but I don't have anything plugged in to this network yet. So that's very interesting. 
But for the most part, this looks pretty much identical to the cloud dashboard that we've seen before, which is good. That makes it really easy for us to be acquainted with this software and knowing that it's going to be pretty much the same and not any different than what we're already used to. It doesn't look like there's any devices found, settings, add new Wi-Fi, network. Okay, so it says two new switches and we should only have one switch. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Let's just go ahead and delete these. And they should reappear no matter what anyway. So let's just delete all. All right. And we may need to give this time to refresh as it discovers new devices. So we will let that sit for a while and hopefully it rediscovers the devices and I'll be right back. All right, it only took about a minute to rediscover devices. I'm pretty sure this is our AP switch. So let's go ahead and set this up. So I'm gonna click on that button there. Uh, it's probably uh, adopting, we'll say, or connecting and getting integrated into our dashboard. That's my guess. In the meantime, we can go ahead and name it. So this is the 16 port switch. So we'll say um, Alta, oops, Alta 16 PO, POE. All right, and it's connected. And we should see that there's an update available if there is one, uh, but we're just gonna let this sit for now and see what happens. It doesn't, it looks like it's still trying to get connected and we have, oh, here we go. Okay, so here are all the listed of devices that are on our network that you can see. So that's pretty cool. Everything's already like popping up and appearing appropriately. Uh, we can see our um, network controller right here. So we're just gonna call this one control because we know that that's the IP address that we saw earlier. And Tech Vision Intel, GL Technology. So this is my Broom 2. Uh, this is my MacBook Pro with an adapter, leaving this to be the 16 port switch. So we'll call it uh, AS16, so Alta, well, we'll just call it A16. So Tech Vision Intelligence, interesting. Okay, um, let's see, let's go back to here. It looks like we've got a load, so that's coming up appropriately. Oh, that's interesting, it has different IP addresses. This one says 164 and this one says 130. Let's go back to here. Oh, 130 is, oh, okay, okay, I see what happens. That's my mistake, <laughs> this is, our NAS, let's rename this one to N1 NAS. Oops, I forgot that was on the network. It's a good thing we double checked and so control shows up for itself and then the actual switch itself shows up under its own thing. Okay, that's pretty cool. Doesn't look like there's any updates available. That's fine for now. All right, so before we plug in any other devices, let's just go ahead and create a new Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna call our new Wi-Fi uh, Ligma. We'll give it a password. Uh, something something easy. Okay, we've got it a password. We'll just say to home base. Uh, we're not gonna change anything else. We're gonna keep it super simple for now. Just click on save. All right, I think that saved. I'm really getting a good warm fuzzy confirmation from that. Hit back. Okay, it definitely worked. Still only one device on the network. All right, let's get some other stuff plugged in. All right, so I've plugged in two additional access points. So we should see those appear. Um, I see that our devices has changed to five from four. So that's a good sign. There's six, whoa, whoa. Uh, I guess they're still getting powered on and kind of getting situated. So we'll give that a second. AP6 Pro, that one came up immediately. That's good. Uh, I assume that's this one, 4C. Uh, well, okay, just, I'm gonna guess that's still, oh, okay, no, that's right. It, it moves from devices to network when it discovers them. So we have two new APs. It looks like, yep, that's our AP6 Pro Outdoor and then our AP6 Pro. So we'll just set up both of those. And it's letting us know that one or more devices is out of date and they need to be updated. So we'll give this a second to connect before we update. Um, hopefully when they get up IP addresses, they show up here, maybe even a little green icon or whatever color this is, I'm colorblind, uh, to let us know that 
um, they're fully connected. So we're just gonna sit and wait for a little bit and then I will click the update button. All right, I'd say it's been less than a minute. So let's just go ahead and name these AP6 Outdoor. And this one we'll just call it AP6 Pro. All right, S16. Oh, S16, that's what they like to call it. Let's change the name of this to S16. S16. And we're gonna get rid of PoE, we'll just call it S16. That's good. All right, so they connected. Uh, let's go ahead and run updates on these. We'll say right now, because there is literally nothing on, connected to this network at this time. They're literally just brand new devices. And you can see that they've already chosen channels, which is really cool. So they've chosen channels 11 and 36. And then on the AP6 Pro, we have 36 and one. So it's pretty cool that they've auto figured out what needs to be done. Oh, it looks like the AP6 Pro is already done downloading. So we're gonna go ahead and reboot this. Still waiting for the AP6 Pro Outdoor. It looks like it's to 100%. Uh, what? I think I already rebooted that. We're not gonna press this again. We'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll come back to this. All right, so I think pretty much everyone's are gonna be already familiar with this dashboard because we've seen it all before in the cloud. We have what looks like all the same options as we would in the cloud service. We can change our time zones, we can add SSH keys. This is very beneficial for troubleshooting purposes. Um, we have some more advanced features here. We have a syslog host, you know, for setting our logs to. I'd say this is pretty much all the same stuff we're already familiar with. Yeah, filters for blocking domains, applications. Yeah, this is pretty much identical to what we've seen before online. So that's really cool that they're able to keep it pretty much identical to the cloud service. All right, looks like both these are booted back up, so that's good. So, you know, we have the awesome, um, legend, I guess, or the diagram that shows us what's plugged into what. We can power cycle these ports, which is really cool. And this is all done locally. Oh man, this is so awesome. We can even set our VLANs from here if you wanted. We can see the current temperature of our device. What is this? There we go. I was like, how do we switch this to Fahrenheit? I don't know if that's hot or cold, but 37C, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good temperature, pretty comfortable temperature, I'd say. I'd be very happy with that. Um, we got more settings. Yep, these are all the same settings that we would always see. There's there's literally nothing different here. PoE update available, that's interesting. Um, okay, close this. And then we have pretty much all the same options for Wi-Fi that I think most of us would be familiar with here. We can change all the settings if we'd like. There's more settings, you know, for mesh, if you wanted to auto mesh, which is a great option. You can just plug it into power and they'll auto mesh, which is probably one of the coolest features I've ever seen. And of course we can scan. So pretty much the same. We're not gonna click on that either. So if we go back to devices, we could put these on their own VLANs if we wanted, change the data rates, nothing out of the ordinary. I'd say that's pretty, Feature complete. It doesn't look look like anything is missing. The only thing that I'm not really seeing immediately or popping out immediately is the option to update control. Like, how do I know this is all the way up to date? Um, that's really strange. I think I don't I don't see anything in settings that would say, hey, you know, you need to update this, no devices, that's it. That's that's not good. I wonder, I wonder if this is a bug or if there's something I'm doing that's not right. But yeah, I don't see, I'm not seeing anything anywhere to update our control unit. It's interesting they have Wi-Fi logos here. I've never noticed that before. We know there's not our Wi-Fi, they're plugged in. Wow, it's actually sending Oh, that's because I'm connected. I was like, oh, it's sending a lot of data, but obviously because I'm connected to it. <laughs> um, wired, wireless, yep, yeah, okay. Well, I guess that's I guess that's all we can show off for now. So, very cool, good job. In typical Alta Labs fashion, everything was incredibly easy to set up on our network. Adding access points was, was also incredibly easy because everything was on the same network. Everything just auto-discovered. 
and operated pretty much identically to the way it does in the cloud so or their cloud service that they offer which is great to see like that's how it should be there shouldn't be any major differences between the cloud controller and then the hardware or local network controller that we have they should be the same it is a little strange logging in with a totally random email address versus uh, logging in with my cloud email address but honestly i think that's cool that they're completely distinct if i would have been able to log in with my cloud address i would have been pretty skeptical that they were actually separate devices but clearly they are separated and they are not uh, sharing resources there and this seems seems like it's got plenty of power like i mentioned earlier it can support a thousand clients that's that's a lot of clients way more than i need for a home lab but nonetheless still really cool Hopefully in the future we can get a router from Alta Lab so that way I don't have to use the broom too. Although don't get me wrong, I like using a broom too. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying it'd be really cool for Alta Labs to release a router in the future or maybe even a combo unit that's a router and a controller or maybe even a controller access point and router. That would be pretty sick. That's like the end game right there. <laughs> Anyway, that's all for things that may be coming in the future. Who knows? I don't know. Only Alpha Lab knows. So I want to thank each and every one of you watching. And of course, these videos would not be possible without all of you out there who watch this content and hopefully enjoy this content. Also, big shout out to Alta Labs for sending all this equipment over because also without you, these videos wouldn't be possible. It's funny how those go hand in hand like that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. Peace.